Hey there, Nick Jutakis here. In this video, we're going to go over using Find and Sed to automate toggling Kubernetes cron jobs on and off by modifying some config files. Now, this video will be specific to Kubernetes cron jobs, but the real takeaway here is to automate the mundane things in your life using whatever command line tools or scripts that you want to put together. So yeah, let's get started here, and we'll just take a look here at uh, a basic Kubernetes cron job. If you're not familiar with Kubernetes, it's not really too important for the sake of the video here, but you know, the idea with the Kubernetes cron job, very similar to a regular cron job where, you know, you can run something on whatever interval that you want. In this case, we just have a scheduled cron job that runs every five minutes, and it really just curls, let's say, an API endpoint here, right? And uh, the real interesting takeaway, though, is Kubernetes cron jobs have this one idea of being able to suspend a cron job, and this value could be either true or false. And when suspend is true, then every five minutes, this cron job won't go and do this uh, work that you wanted to do here. Basically, it's a way to temporarily delete the cron job without actually having to go and you know delete it inside of Kubernetes itself. You can temporarily turn it on and off. Pretty handy. So one use case that you may want to do this for is you know let's say that you're about to put your website into maintenance mode because you're performing you know a very big major database update and maybe the whole entire site needs to be offline for let's say half an hour. So what you could do here is you can just uh, suspend all of your cron jobs here because. You know, theoretically, let's say this curl, uh, it's curling some API endpoint that hits your database. And when you turn maintenance mode on your site, maybe you just disable access to your public website at example.com. But internally, you know, these cron jobs are still going to fire every five minutes or, you know, every day at midnight, whenever it happens to be. And you might get a whole bunch of different database connection errors here if the database is down for whatever reason. So yeah, you may want to just suspend all of your cron jobs. Now, in this case here, you know, I've got one config file that has two different cron jobs here and, and another config file as well with a third one, you know, but in a real application, you know, if you're using this idea of uh, executing Kubernetes cron jobs, you might have, you know, 15 of them, 20 of them. And uh, setting them all to suspend true is kind of a nuisance, right? You can do a find and replace in your code editor to do it on all of them. But wouldn't it be nice if you can just run a little command on the command line? Like, let's say that you can just run something like uh, cron jobs and then, I don't know, disable like that. And uh, suddenly, you know, now suspend is true here. And if I do a git diff here, uh, because this was a git repo here, you could see that suspend has been set to true for all the different cron jobs and all the different applications that we have. Now, in this case, you know, I'm just uh, putting together like application A and application B, but maybe you have like, you know, eight different services here. And uh, yeah, it's kind of nice. Or maybe now let's say we want to enable them because maintenance mode is done. Then we just run cron jobs enable here and now suspend is false here. And if we do a git diff, there's not going to be any difference here because uh, things are back to the initial commit here. So yeah, let's go over uh, how this all works here and you know I've done videos in the past about using uh, this idea of a run script so I'll link to some cards on that one here but yeah really the takeaway here is just this little uh, command that we're running here one of them disables cron jobs and one of them enables them and uh, we're just using find here and find is going to look in a specific directory here and it's going to also match on star which means it's going to pick up you know directory a and b and c and however many apps you might have here basically it's just a wild card there and it's going to look in the cron job file for each of those directories here now, I happen to like using Customize and Argo CD, and you know, Argo CD is really nice because it really applies to this uh, GitOps philosophy of code would be commit to your uh, Git repo and pushed up, and then Argo CD is going to sync the state of your cluster to your Git repo. So if you're wondering, like, why don't you just run like a kubectl command to just suspend true on whatever cron job's there, you could, but then that's not going to be the state of your cluster based on the Git repo. So in this case, you know, it's nice to actually make the updates to the files, commit and push them, and then let Argo CD do the syncing there. But uh, yeah, in this case, you know, we're just finding um, all the different cron job files that we have in our project here. And then we're just executing a command for each match that it finds. So if I go and actually uh, copy this here, and we'll run this in the terminal just to see what it looks like here. Uh, let me clear that. Yeah, so we could see it actually just found both of these cron job files here. And if you know if there were a third directory and a different one, it would go and find it there as well. And then we're just executing our Perl command. Now, I did mention early on in this video that we're using sed to do the find and replace, but you know, in this case, it's doing the exact same thing that you would do with sed, but I find that Perl is a little bit more compatible with both Linux and Mac OS. So the free BSD version of uh, set on Mac OS will not do in-place edits in the same way that it does on Linux. However, Perl will do in-place edits both the same on Linux and Mac OS, which is quite handy here. So yeah, we're just passing in a couple of different Perl flags to do in-place edits here. And, you know, these other flags just make Perl a little bit more similar to how sed works here. You know, we can check out uh, the documentation for Perl if you really want to, or you can uh, if you really want to here. But yeah, the real takeaway is we're just doing a global uh, search for this regular expression here that says, hey, 
hey, let's look at lines that start with two spaces, suspend, colon, and then false, and then end of line, and then just like replace that with two spaces, suspend, true. So in this case, we're doing cron jobs disable. So we're going to be suspending our cron jobs here. So in this case, you know, if we jump back over to this file here, we would expect suspend to be false here. And we could see, you know, this line starts with two spaces and then it ends with the end of the line there. So yeah, in this case, we're just saying, hey, let's go and disable them. Let's set suspend to be true. We're going to do that for all cases that we find in the file here because, you know, maybe we have eight cron jobs here. In this case, there's two of them. We want all of them to be uh, disabled. And then enable is literally the opposite of that. Same exact uh, pattern match here for find. And then we're just doing uh, the difference here where we just looked for suspend true, and then we set them over to be suspend false. And then it also applies globally. And there you go. So not too complicated at all, but uh, we get this nice little behavior now where, you know, since this is a run script, we can just run cron jobs disable or enable. And you might be wondering like, well, if you know, if you're not enabling maintenance mode a lot, like maybe you do a big massive database upgrade like once a year or something like that. Like, is it really worth it to make uh, these little functions here instead of just doing the find and replace in your code editor? And I think the answer is yes, just because like there is some explicitness to this where if someone were to be looking at this project, even your future self, like having these functions defined in the code just lets you know mentally like, oh, like disabling and enabling cron jobs is like a thing that we do. So you get to explore some behavior of uh, maybe, you know, little bits and pieces of how your application comes together and things you might need to account for versus just running like an ad hoc find and replace in your code editor. But yeah, I mean, this really will come down to whatever use cases that you have. Actually, I'm curious, you know, what are some uh, automation things that you've done recently where you just combine things like, you know, executing uh, whatever command with find to do some type of find and replace here just to automate something in your day to day. Uh, let us know in the comments below. Also, if you have any questions about any of this, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer all of them. Thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you in the next video.